Hey, oh, let's talk about project two. So the financial project is introduced in module five, uh, I think in part two of module five for us. Um, and I want to talk through it. So when you go into uh, the link, right, this is where you're, you know, going to put it in or whatever, you see three items. Now, I want us to focus on two of them. The first one is the document, okay, which we're going to look at. And then the third one is the Excel sheet. Now, Write this down. The only thing you're turning in for project two is a Word document where you're gonna answer questions, okay? The Excel sheet that is here, right? This Excel sheet right here, whoop. Um, whoop. If I bring it up, we are going to use this Excel sheet to help us do the formulas and all of that and just like in project one, if you send me this Excel sheet, I will check to make sure your numbers are right. So when you go to write it in your Word document, all of your numbers and formulas are correct. I will not check your Word document. I will check this Excel template. So you're going to use this Excel template just to do your formulas, calculate all your pieces, and then you're gonna take these numbers and put them into your Word document so that it works and you have everything you need. That is the only purpose of this Excel sheet, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into the document, okay? So it's the financial project. As an Ivy Tech student, blah, 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 you are here to get a degree, so hopefully you can either get a better job or advance in what you're doing, change careers completely, who knows? But what we're going to do is we're going to play the comparison game. So we're going to compare you as an Ivy Tech graduate in whatever field you want to be in compared to a high school graduate. Now, for our case here, assume that the median annual income for a high school graduate is $23,000. That is the value you are using. Got it? Great. Also, use this value in comparison statements. Absolute and relative change is what you're going to be using. And in case you forget what absolute and relative change is, we did that in section seven. So looking at like page, I don't know, 71 in your workbook. So if you're really confused for absolute relative change, page 71. Okay, let's move on. Now again, you don't have to turn in the Excel sheet. You only have to submit the Word document. That is all I'm going to grade. Again, you can send the Excel to me and I will check your numbers, then you can write. But here we go. You're going to write yourself a Word document answering all of these questions. And that's what we're gonna go over right now. So for the first one, these are gimmies. Explain what job you have chosen. Okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to be an astronaut? Do you want to be a registered nurse? Do you want to be a lawyer? Do you want to be a math professor? Do you want to be, I don't know, a statistician for a baseball team? Whatever you want to be, be it, right? If you can dream it, you can do it. So you're going to go to this website or Google it, um, and you're going to find either the median or the average, don't really care, find the, the median salary for your job, right? I'm an astronaut. I'm going to make $180,000 a year. I don't know how much astronauts earn. I have no, literally no idea. But you're going to tell me that. I want to be an astronaut because I think it'd be great if I could walk on the moon. Blah, blah, blah. Great. Whatever. I don't care. I'm going to make this much money. Then compare that to a high school graduate. How does your salary compare? Don't just say, I earn 80000 college graduate earns 23000 Use comparative statements. And if you don't know what that means, go back and watch the videos in section seven. Okay, but this first part, that's um, right here, right? You can type in, I'm a college graduate. I'm making 80,000. High school graduate made 23. Absolute change equals new minus old. I'm earning 57,000 more than the high school graduate. Relative change is absolute change divided by old. That's 247.83% more. That is the process. Now, once you do these two, you can just drag them down. Right now, there's nothing here, but as I put these values in, everything will auto-populate. Remember, Excel is a calculator, okay? So 
Let's go back to our sheet. So that's the first part. Then we get to the mortgage loan. Okay, so mortgages, back to our workbook, mortgages are in section 11. So we are talking about, um, that starts on page like 139-ish, page 139. Formulas that you're going to need could be on page 140, 141, and you're going to see you have an APR of 1.85. This is a 30-year loan. You're spending 32% on page 144 they talk through an example of that whole percent piece but here's the deal of your monthly gross income you know your annual income from number one so remember to take anything that's annual and making it monthly there are 12 months in a year so you're going to take that annual divided by 12 right let's go back to our excel monthly salary if I take my annual and divide it by 12, I get my monthly. That's the process, okay? So 32% of your monthly. Remember, of means multiply, right? So we are going to go back to Excel. Percent of salary to the mortgage equals 32% of my monthly salary. Boom, there it is. Okay, so you can type these things right in and it's going to poop out your answer. So then after you get, do this, you're going to use the formula from page 145 formula for this um, page 145. Okay, now you're doing everything for you as a college graduate and then again for the high school graduate because you want to compare. Right? So this is how much I can afford using the formula on page 145, plugging in the numbers. There are videos that go with that, tell you how to do that. Do it for you, do it for the high school, and then compare. Again, you can compare using that Excel document. Then you go to the retirement. Retirement is the next section. Number, uh, section 12, page 151 is the formula for retirement, page one. 51. Again, there are videos for this. And then for the retirement piece, you're going to fill in these two. These two lines. Fill them in. It'll get you the numbers, and then you can't write them. Now, when we get down to four and five in the salary increase, this is where we're going to talk about linear versus exponential growth, right? Remember, um, well, here, part, part two Exponential growth is percentage, right? So exponential modeling is section nine. So you got to go back to section nine if you got to think about percent. And then linear growth, section eight, that's number five, comparing linear and exponential. Sorry, I skipped section four. But we're talking about doubling. Now, I don't remember where it is. Somewhere in here, there is a rule of Page 124, page 124, the rule of doubling. I'm just going to stop that. For number four, if you use the rule of doubling, page 124, number four is real easy. Okay, page 124, there's a video that goes with that. All right, so basically, I gave you the page numbers, where the formulas are, I gave you the topics, showed you about the Excel document. Now we're going to go over this again next week in our live class, but if anybody is working ahead or wants to kind of see how it goes, here's our intro video. And even after we talk about it in class, this will be kind of a helpful tool. So remember, you're only turning in a Word document. This you can send to me at any point in time, and I will check your numbers, okay, because I can look at what you're giving me. And um, if your numbers are right, then it's a matter of putting them into the write-up. And um, it's due April 19th. So it is literally a month from today. We got all kinds of time um, to turn this in, but it's going to come before we know it. So I want to make sure we're ready. So here we go. Project two. Let's rock it. Thanks all.